Let's talk about the genocide gentry. There's a whole website if you want to check it out. It's called genocidegentry.org and uh, it gives a lot Which is of- It's a great name, by the way. It really is. I, I'm a big fan of alliteration. I try to use it <laughs> as much as I possibly can. A trio of human rights groups announced a new interactive initiative exposing what the co coalition calls a genocide gentry of weapons company executives and board members uh, and 54 museums, cultural organizations, universities, and colleges that currently host these individuals on their boards or in other prominent roles. This is really like important research because I think some people have these probably possibly not after the encampment that got so violently quashed at, at universities this past summer, but people might have this idea that like these progressive movements and paradigms have a home in universities because they did during Vietnam. Because they used to. And I think it's important to show that they don't. And that like a lot of really great places like the Kennedy Center, for instance, in DC that does great programming will invite like, you know, indigenous performers to, to, to come and be a part of something that's like clearly you know, anti-American imperialism, but they do this at the same time that they make bank off of this. It's so twisted. They make bank off of this as weapons manufacturers that are perpetuating genocide. So it's kind of like how Mayor Bowser in DC spray painted Black Lives Matter on 16th Street right outside the White House. They yeah. can, they can, they can dress it up. They can put, uh, they can, they can dress up US imperialism as, you know, like an indigenous Halloween costume and they can parade that shit around and make themselves look progressive. But at the core, this is who is behind it. It's now called Black Lives Matter Boulevard. Yeah, which is hilarious. <laughs> So <clears throat> one example is Kathy Warden, who's the Northrop Grumman CEO and president. She is James Madison University scholarship sponsor. She's part of the Aspen Cybersecurity Group, which... Oh. They're terrifying. They are uh, a global nonprofit think tank committed to realizing a free, just, and equitable society. <laughs> Uh, it, has significant, it has significant ties to the defense industry through shared board membership with General Dynamics at Northrop Grumman. And they are obviously very much tied, therefore, to genocide and the perpetuation of ecocide, climate chaos, and death and destruction around the world. But sure, that, that reads to me as a free, just, and equitable society. Um, absolutely. Brian Rogers, uh, RTX Board of Directors, which is RTX's Raytheon. Rogers is currently a trustee of the Harvard Management Company, ta tasked with the managing the $50 billion endowment. So you have a blood on his hands war profiteer deciding where the $50 billion that Harvard had go has goes. Notably, Harvard administrators have cracked down on students demanding divestment from weapons companies like Raytheon. That's shocking. Another one is, uh, I don't know how to say this, uh, this guy's name, Jay. Jay Johnson, yeah. Uh, I also don't care if I get his name wrong because fuck this guy. Well, he used to be under Obama. He <laughs> so he is on, oh, Revolving Door Much? He's now the um, Lockheed Martin's board of directors. Isn't that funny? He's a Columbia University I, I think, trustee. You know, the, revol the revolving door is a little too slow. I feel like the the rate they move, it needs to be like a slip and slide. <laughs> like just one or the other, straight into- Have revolving doors though? They're terrifying. They can go fast. Yes. Everyone, fun fact, Eleanor is afraid of revolving doors. I am. Not and not stuck. and not the not the kind with Raytheon. You, she means like the kind of buildings. I'm also afraid of those, but in a more uh, hypothet not hypothetical, but in a more like um abstract sense. Anyway, so this penis wrinkle Johnson, he is a Columbia University trustee. He is on the MetLife Board of Director Directors, which is fossil fuels. He's also on the US Steel Board of Directors, fossil fuels. And he's obviously a, a strong part of the extreme suppression that was experienced by protesters at Columbia University. But this is progressive because he's a person of color, Eleanor. You're not allowed to point out that anything bad could be done by people of color. I didn't even realize he was a person of color, but that don't mean shit in this situation because... You did, as, not, you did not yes and my improv on that one. <laughs> I did not because I was busy looking at his picture. Heather Wilson, Lockheed Martin Board of Directors. She's on the National Science Foundation Board. I wonder if they're allowed then to talk about the climate chaos that's connected to war. Well, and did, did you know bombs work on science? That's <laughs> what they're powered by. She's also the University of Texas at El Paso president. So cool. She you know, the... women, but despite what we've learned, women can have it all. Yeah. She has a true. great family life. She can have it all. She's also on the Google Public Sector Board of Directors. This is uh, Heather Wilson. Yeah. 
for those of you taking notes. <laughs> but okay. it is important to name these people. It's important they not <clears throat> just be a dark blob that you never like investigate. So absolutely, and I think uh, and and I I think that it's important to to just talk about it. And there's also a map if you go to gen genocide gentry. There's a map, so you could like find out. Look at this. Here's a group photo. Look at this lovely, diverse group of fellows and lady. Uh, <laughs> so there's a map, so you could find something that's close to you, you know, and um, yeah, do with say, that information say, whatever you will. Say, say hi or have a sit in protest as a form of Send saying a hi. Send a Harry and David package, <laughs> you know. Again, I think it's really important to recognize the deep seated connections that these institutions have with the military industrial complex. And this is something that I, I talked to uh, Christian Sorensen, who does a great job of uh, he, he he has a sub stack where he talks a lot about uh, the military industrial complex. And his point was that like people think about it like it's just weapons, but that's like actually that's just a, a part of it. There it is an entire ecosystem. I hate using that word for this, but it is an entire ecosystem of connections that are so woven tightly into the culture of the United States that it's impossible to just pull one without pulling the whole fucking thread. And so I, it's really important to recognize these connections and also therefore recognize that there are so many pressure points to look at when organizing, for instance, against the military industrial complex. Well said. And speaking of protesting and organizing. Yeah, so you see, which I was a part of for a moment, uh, that's the University of By California. a part of, she means a student there, not a Ra ex Raytheon board of, you know, member of the board. Yeah, no, unfortunately, they didn't take my, uh, they didn't take my resume on LinkedIn. I tried. <laughs> so UC, that's the University of California. UC Regents approve campus police requests for more military style weapons and ammunition. And I'm sure it says, this has nothing to do with the protests that happened no. in the UC system. No. Basically, the uh, they want more drones, robots, which that I'm, that's not drones. Dystopian. The fuck are they doing drones? Oh, like every campus police now has drones, dude. Pepper balls and projectile launchers. UCLA. Like that's t-shirt cannons, right? Exactly. Okay. UCLA's police, their request included three drones, eight projectile launchers, 3,000 rounds of pepper balls, and 400 foam and sponge rounds. Lest we ha like have to go over this again, less than lethal ammunition can be lethal. It can also be very, very debilitating. People have been permanently disabled because of these less than lethal rounds. Yeah. So the idea that this is just going to be like a little pinprick and an ow, just, I, and that just wouldn't feel good. Rubber no. bullets. It's not a big deal. Yeah, They can severely injure you. They take out eyes. Yeah. And of course, their argument is that this is not for peaceful protests. This is for protests that turn violent. I I'm never going to stop saying this. Police make shit violent, okay? Mm -hmm. Police who show up dressed like Rambo and or RoboCop carrying 3,000 rounds of pepper balls. Like, you're not, if, if, you, if, if you really want to be peaceful, show up like Andy Griffith, okay? Dress like dress like Mr. Rogers and and come talk to us. Don't show up rided gear to the up to the gills this, and say that it, it it's their fault that shit was, turned violent. This was one of my uh, old comedy bits on one of my specials. Was uh, no one dresses like Rambo and acts like Gandhi. It's just not a it's not a thing. Exactly. So <clears throat> in all of my years of protesting, which has been since two thousand like three, I have never seen shit get violent where the police did not start it first. Never, ever, never one single time, either police or neo-Nazis and fascists. I have never, ever seen it once go the other way. 